They appreciate being back here with this last Sunday. You're back today, and we're so thankful for it. So appreciate the prayers that y'all sent up on our behalf. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Your kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, it is great to be in your house today. Father, I pray that your spirit will lead us during this time, that he will guide us in all that we do, Father. That all the words spoken, the song sung, and the prayers lifted up will be for your honor and your glory. For you alone are worthy. Lord, we pray for those who couldn't be here today due to illness. Father, and of course, we always pray for those who have lost loved ones. And for our nation, Lord, we lift that up especially to you today. Lord, we just ask you to be with us now and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, don't forget, Friday, July the 3rd, we're going to have a special celebration here at the church. Uh, what time does that start? Six o'clock okay, Eastern. So, you know, plan on coming, enjoy, you know, some time, and just think we're going to have a great time together as a church family. Um, Patty is still looking for sponsors for Chaco, so if you'd be interested in helping out in that area, please get in touch with her. Uh, we do need some help in the sound room, so if any of you have any, uh, any inclination towards technology, it would be greatly appreciated if, to help out in that area. That's, that's an area of service that you can assist in. And the, the Constructors for Christ came back. Brother Gary, uh, you want to come up and share a little bit about that with us? Microphone. Oh, I really wasn't prepared for this. But we had to go to Pine Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Aniana. We had 15 from our church. We had a total of 42 there from churches in six states and uh, we had a real good week we erected and we were finished from the inside so we we got quite a bit done we uh, started work on the balcony and got out a lot of the wall frame so uh, just to pray for the others that are coming in there'll be good groups come in for the next and uh, the group smaller this year because of the virus everybody's scared of the virus so
How many of y'all remember Hee Haw? Oh, yeah. Boy, I tell you what, Saturday nights at the Red House. He used to, when I was a kid growing up, first was Lawrence Welk, but when Hee Haw got the same time slot, old Lawrence took, a back, took the backstage real fast. The group, gloom, despair, and agony on me. How many of you can relate to that song at times? Yeah, you know, we, one of the things that I find that we experience with, with people who, especially new Christians, you know, and others, they expect whenever you become a Christian, everything's just going to be wonderful. Everything's going to be flowing. Everything's going to be great. But that's not the case, is it? You know, bad things happen in this life. Bad things happen to the saved and the unsaved alike. God sends his blessing, but there's also those trying and difficult times. And, and I'm sure each and every one of you has at some time said, why? Why are these things happening? Why is this precious person that has done nothing but good and been so good to everybody suffering so terribly from this illness? Why is it every time that I'm starting to get ahead a little bit, something goes wrong and suddenly I'm, I'm shoved back again? I bet every single one of you has asked the, the question. Think about it for a moment. Have, have you ever had car trouble? <laughs> yeah, have, you, have you ever had a washer or dryer tear up on you? You know, we, we could go on and on and on naming, you know, why the bad things are happen to us. But the reality is that they do. So let's ask ourselves a question. Why do bad things happen? Here's the answer right here. Sin is why bad things happen. That's right. You see, recognize that sin starts. You know, what we find when we look at this, he says, I am the highest of the clouds. I will be like the most high. We have to be Satan begin to assume that he can become God. No one can become God. God is special. God is higher than our thoughts. But that's how it starts out. So, you know, let make that a warning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Far too often we become selfish individuals, don't we? You see, selfishness is a hallmark of sin. Selfishness is a hallmark of rebellion. You know, that's what, that's, this is what happens whenever we, whenever we start entering into sin is we begin thinking about ourselves and focusing upon ourselves. And we look, try to look out for number one. You know that, that number one should be Jesus Christ in our life. Amen. It should not be it should not be ourselves. Rather, it should be Him. But recognize that's where sin started. You see, but beyond that, see, sin recognizes against God in any form, in any size, in any shape. Sin is rebellion against God. Mm -hmm. So as a result, when we rebel against God. We reap the consequences of our sin. That's just the way it is. That's the reality of it. See, sin, what does it do? It causes death and it causes destruction. How many of you can look back? And it's funny this week. I can. This week, I woke up. And when I woke up, for some reason, my mind went back to my childhood. And my mind went back to the worship service of my, of my childhood. And those of you that read my devotionals, you might remember the Lord is in his holy temple and all the earth keep silence. That was the call to worship that they used when I was a kid. Yeah, I got a wonderful choir, had a great choir director. And, you know, and I remember that song so well. And it, it just it woke up and it was like, wow, amazing. The Lord is in his holy temple. You know, my mind went back to all those precious saints that were up in that choir singing, the people who were directing it, most all of whom are no longer with us. Why? Because of death. You know, sadly, wonderful, precious saints, but the reality is death and destruction are part of this world. We like to pretend it's not. We like to hide from it. We, we, we like to, to, to not look at it. We don't want to think about it. You know, I, I've witnessed this with, with people who are dying, individuals who are not doing well. You know, and, and there's a standard line. Like, I would rather remember them like they were. How many times have you heard that line? You know what they're really saying? I don't want to think about the fact that that may be me one day. Mm 
They're not, they're not going to remember that person the way they were. They don't want to face the, they, they don't want to face the reality of dying. That's the, what they're that's what they're hiding themselves from. They're not thinking about the other person. They're thinking about number one once again. Sin causes death and destruction. Even when even when you're even when you don't see something actually getting killed. It's happening all the time. Go look across the road. There's trees, and they're all fighting for the sunlight each year. The trees put out thousands and thousands of seeds, you know, and the seeds germinate. But how many of them ever make it to, to become a mature tree, to grow high in the forest? Not many. Very few, actually. So, so as a result, death and destruction is all around us, and it's happening constantly. And it is the result of sin. See, sin affects everything. Like I was saying, it just doesn't affect us, but it affects literally the entirety of the creation. But to start with, it affects our relationship with God. You know, think about it for a moment. God created man to have fellowship with him. Yeah. That's, that, was, that was the purpose of our creation. We were to have fellowship. And we long to have fellowship with God. We long, we desire it. We crave it. We want it. We want to have fellowship with God. You know, but sin affects our relationship with Him. That is why we as believers in Jesus Christ, we need, and when we sin, we need to confess our sin. We need, to, we need to ask God to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What does His Word say? If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. Yeah. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a contractual state. If we confess it, he will cleanse us and forgive us. You know, that's the thing that we need to be doing. But if sin also affects our lives, you know, how many of you have, have been sick? Virtually everybody in this room can raise your hands on that, can't you? Every single one of us say, yes, I have been sick. Some have been just sick a little bit. Some have been very deathly ill. Sin has caused that. But like I said, sin, sin goes just, just that. How many of you have to do, have to do maintenance on the house? Yeah, I have I have a car because you're home. You never own a home because you have fall apart. Things break down. Things dissolve. You know, that's just the way it happens. Uh, I remember when my girls were little, I showed them a picture of their grandmother who they just absolutely adored. And my mother was a beautiful woman when she was younger. It was when she was older too. But they looked at the picture. They knew her as she was at that point in her life. But I showed them when she was a young girl. This, this is what she looked like. You know, and, and they were like, wow, you know, because it just didn't register with them. But at one point in time, she had been the young girl, and she had been the little girl, and she had been the teenager. So, you know, that's the reality of it. It affects our lives. It also affects our relationships with others. Sin affects our relationship with others. Sin affects the entire totality of our being. That's right. Recognize it. And, of course, as I've already mentioned, it affects the earth itself. You know, the very earth that we live in. You know, there was an earthquake over in Chickamauga yesterday? No, it's like a 2.6. I mean, you probably just barely felt it if you were in Chickamauga. It was very minor, but there was one over there. You know, in fact, I'm one of those, I got this, I'm easy in the morning to predict what I'm going to do. Get up, make coffee, feed the animals, do all, take all my medicines, sit down, read the Bible, write the devotional. Then I start looking at the weather. Then I'll look at the news, and that includes the earthquake. You know, and then maybe go through the sports and do a few other things. But you know, the idea being is you look at it every day, what do you see? Death, destruction, death, destruction, earthquakes. Warnings. It's out there all the time. The earth itself has been affected by sin. That's the reality of it. In Romans 22, it says, because the creation itself from the bondage of decay into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans with labors and birth pains together until now. You know, the creation itself is, was affected by the sin of man. The world we live in 
beautiful as it may be, and we're fortunate we live in an area that is absolutely some breathtaking some views and some scenes. And it's just incredibly gorgeous here. But you know what? This isn't the world that God created. This is the aftermath of the flood. You know, it is beautiful it is. It's not as beautiful as what God created and what God has in store. You know, we're kind of like an Oreo cookie right now. We're in the middle, you know, right now between that which was and that which will be. God has something wonderful in store for each and every one of us who are born again believers in Jesus Christ. But right now, the creation itself longs and desires because even the creation knows that this isn't right. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. You know, that's just the reality of it. That's what Paul's telling us. But you know what, brothers and sisters in Christ, this also is a verse that gives us hope. It gives us promise. Why? Because it tells us, notice the word birth pangs. Hey, we got something better coming. Yeah. Right. We got something better coming. Mm -hmm. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, you got something a lot worse coming. Yeah. You think you got problems now? You ain't seen problems. But you know what? If you're a born again believer in Jesus Christ, you have something to look forward to. Amen. 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 That should excite each and every single one of us. See, recognize God did not create us to suffer and die. That was not his original plan. You know, whenever he created things, he created us to have eternal life. That's what he wants for all men. You see, you know, God's desire is for each and every one of us to have eternal life and to not suffer. That's why Jesus came. What does John 3, 16 say? We all know that verse. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten. Notice the world. That he sent his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Yeah, you know, and, and the beauty of it is, it's not, just, it's not just eternal life. It's life right now. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants us to have an abundant life right now. Does that mean it's going to be a life free from suffering? Does that mean it's going to be a life free from, from pain and, and the things of this nature? The answer is what? No. Why? Because we live in a world that is filled with sin. And we're just, you know, we're passing through, we're reaping the harvest for it right now. But there is down the road. The earth and and it was created perfect. Let's go to that next slide. God did not create us to suffer. I, I love it. In Genesis chapter 1, it says this over and over again. Then God saw everything. God made it. He created it. He created it perfect. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. Absolutely no flaws, no problems whatsoever. You know, as I look at it, God created a world that was fully mature. That's right. You ever think about that? If you walked around on the eighth day, you would walk through old growth forest. You would see grown animals. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you, would, you would experience everything, the full, the totality of creation. You would say, wow, this has been here for, for millions of years and billions of years. But you know what? That's how God created it. Yeah. Why? He created it perfect. Because that's what he wanted for man. And of course, that's just who God is. God is perfection. He created it, and it was very, very good. It was perfect. That's the way God wanted it. You see, he created mankind in God's image. We're created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. You know, when God made, remember, remember, God came to walk in the garden in the coolness of, of the evening. Now, all of us probably enjoy the evening. No, especially after you've done a hard day's work and it starts cooling down a little bit. I, I think of this being from Florida, where it's hot most of the time. You know, oh, I'll get all day long on the tractor or something and just eating dust and this you know, blistering heat and everything else. And then you get in a shower and sit down in the cool in the evening. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Bailing hay, wonderful. You know, you can all relate to that in some manner. But you know what? He come to walk in the coolness that he called out for Adam and Eve. Why? Because he wanted to have fellowship with them. He knew what they had done, but even so, you know, I don't, I, in my mind, I can't think, help but think, that's probably not the first time he did that. That's something he probably did a lot. He had fellowship with them. 
And he wants to have fellowship with you. And as a result, we're created in his image. But you know what? Once again, sin entered into the picture, didn't it? Once again, sin probably became part of the problem. You see, it says in Genesis 1.27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Oh, you know what the Bible says? You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God put a lot of thought into you, ladies and gentlemen. God put a lot of thought to you who are watching me on Facebook right now. Amen. God, God, God put a lot of thought into you. He planned you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He made you in his image. He made you to have fellowship with him. That's his goal. That's his plan now. He wants that fellowship with each and every single member of the human race. That's why we share the good news of Jesus Christ. Why? Because that's how you have the fellowship with God. Through Jesus Christ. How wonderful that is. See, we were created to have fellowship with God. I've been harping on this point for a while. You know, but beyond that, let's go to the next one. So man, here's the problem. Man, he introduced sin into the world. It says, therefore, it's just through one man sin entered the world of death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. Yeah. Let's be honest. Are any of you perfect? Am I perfect, Tracy? No. Cheyenne? No. Okay, you got two no's there, but the my other daughter's here. She could you get a you get a free some there saying I was I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. We're all flawed by sin because we're all the offspring of Adam. That's the reality of it. Sin entered the world. That's the reality of it. All the offspring of Adam. Uh, we have inherited his sin nature. We're drawn to it. We long, we, we, we we're attracted to it. It's just sort of that, what we are. You know, we become, we're selfish. We're rebellious. You know, we want to have it our own way. We want to, we want to do what makes us feel good. And it doesn't matter if it does something bad to somebody else. As long as we come out on top, we have inherited the sin nature of Adam. That's the reality of it. And the consequences of sin, ladies and gentlemen, is death. It says, for the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. You hear that? The wages of sin is death. Uh, there, was a, there was a pastor one time who preached one of the great sermons, a sinner in the hands of an angry God. And, and he talked about that really... We are all walking around on the, this earth as though we are walking on a rotten piece of carpet. And there, it, we can fall through at any moment because death can come. You know, we, we, some people, we know they're not going to be around much longer. They've got some, some fatal illness and, and, and there's nothing that, can, that modern medicine can do about it. And so when they pass, you know, it's tragic or maybe they're well advanced in years and they've declined and they've fallen apart. But how many times has it been someone who's a teenager or someone in their 20s or some child or even a baby? And I've got a sister that lived one day. So as a result, we find that the death is there. Death is the result of sin. It's part of the nature. It's, it's the reality that we live in because of sin. That's why sin is so dreadful. That's why sin is so awful. That you want to know why bad things happen? It's because of sin. <laughs> it's because of the reality of, that we're experiencing right now. You know, it, it says because of sin, the entire world was cursed. Then look at Genesis 3.17, because I want to dwell on this for a moment. Then to Adam he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the earth because of you. In sorrow you shall eat of it all the days of your life. You know, and, and I, I've lived an interesting life. I farmed quite a bit. I had citrus. Citrus was kind of a specialty. Um, you know, one of the things, well, there's some things you got to do. One thing is you got to control weeds. That's number one on the list because weeds are trying to get the water. They're trying to get. They're trying to get the, the nutrients. And, you know, and eventually, if you don't control the weeds, it'll kill the tree. Or you know, some of y'all grow corn, cotton, hay, and other stuff. You have the same thing can happen in your fields. But you know what? It's beyond that. It's beyond that. You know, it, it's, it's the total, sum total of creation. 
Creation is working against us because of sin and death being in this world. You know, your home appliances are going to break down. Your cars are going to break down. You know, hurricanes are going to happen. Tornadoes are going to happen. All the earth is cursed, and all of these things are happening because of sin. The entire world was cursed. Don't think it's just for farmers. This applies to each and every single one of you who are here. Ever sit in a chair and had it break down? Not much fun, is it? Especially if it's a chair you love and it feels real good and it's comfortable. It's your favorite chair to sit in and it goes to the floor. And you know, well, here goes the tree. Here we go. Let's head to the furniture store and get to do whatever. But you know what? That happens because of sin. And that's the reality of it. So, and when you, so you ask a question, where is God in all this? I've had heard people say, why, how can God allow this to happen? How can God allow this person to suffer? How can God allow these terrible things to take place? Well, the answer is sin. We need to recognize, folks, God is in control. Amen. God is in control. God is on the throne. He is in control of all things. Nothing happens in his creation that he does not allow. Nothing happens in his creation that he is not aware of. He, he is, God is the ultimate micromanager. He is aware of every single little detail that is happening all around us. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Some people blame him, but we can take comfort in that, can't we? You may be taken by surprise, but you know what? God is never taken by surprise. Amen, that's right. He knows well. God has a plan. God is in control. You can take comfort in that. You may, things may be going tough right now. It may be hard. You may not understand what's happening. But you know what? God is in control of all things. He's not a helpless observer. Yes, there, there are theories of philosophy that suggest that God created everything and then just steps back and doesn't pay much attention to it. Nothing could be further from the truth. God is not a helpless observer. He knows exactly what's going on. You know, he's a loving God, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what? He's also a just God. That's right. You know, we may wonder, why are wicked people prospering? Because we live in a sinful, wicked world. We live, we live in a world where the system that we live under is actually Satan's system. God, God's system was kind of replaced when Adam sinned. But you know what? God's in control. He's going to, set, he's going to balance the books. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. going to set things right. He's going to have an audit at the end of the age. We're all going to have to stand accountable for it. But you know what? Including the devil himself. But God is a just God. And hey, Sin has consequences, doesn't it? God's just God. He just didn't just deserves whenever these things happen. All of us are sinners. We have to recognize that. But you know, when God allows suffering to glorify himself and fulfill his will, you might say, that doesn't sound right. Think about it. Joseph. Joseph. Man, what a great, what a great example. Joseph was sent sold into slavery by his brothers. How's that for a dysfunctional family to start with? Served faithfully as first master, was accused of wrong that he didn't do, went into prison for years, but ultimately he became the, the second ruler in all of Egypt. He basically ran the country. He saved the Egyptians and he saved his brothers and all of his family. He even said God had a purpose in all of it. It took years for Joseph to figure out what God was doing. It didn't make sense. No doubt sitting in the depths of the prison. He didn't understand it. But you know what? Ultimately, God had a purpose. And he put him there. Why did he put him there? So Joseph could, I think, one reason he could learn the culture of Egypt. Think about all the different people that passed through that prison. He could learn all about that country and everything about it. He had a lot of places like that. Job suffered. For us, really for our benefit. One well, for the benefit of Job is for our benefit so that we can learn about the faithfulness of God. David suffered. You know, I preached a great series on that. I may do that again one of these days. Jesus suffered. Jesus, who was perfect. Jesus, who was God made man, came to this earth and died for our sins. 
On the mm -hmm. cross, on the cross, for your sins and my sins were poured out upon him in order that we might, that the penalty for our sin might be paid. There's, there's a price that has to be paid for sin in his death, and Jesus died on the cross. That's it. If you don't get nothing else out of this message, you get this. Jesus died because of your sins and because of my sins. Yeah. That's the reality of it. He did. See, times of suffering, what can it do? Well, one thing, it brings us closer to God. A lot of times when things are going good and wonderful, we tend to forget about God, don't we? You know, God just kind of goes to the background. But in times of suffering, it can bring us closer to God. Mm -hmm. That's the reality of it. Jesus was, I like what Charles Swindoll said in a wonderful book, The Darkness Before the Dawn. Jesus was the first to teach us that each, each one of us has a cross to bear. There's a song, Perry, that I remember, Take up thy cross and follow me, I heard my master say. That's how it starts out. And yes, we all have a cross to bear in this life. Some area of pain and suffering in this life. The world around us would have us run from it. Instead, we should embrace it. Why? Because it's our cross to bear. It doesn't always make sense to us, but you know what? That's what it's called walking by faith. That's what it's called trust in God. And always keep in mind, God has better things for us down the road. When others are suffering, we have a chance to be Jesus to those in need. We are one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, that's what we have an opportunity to do. Someone else is suffering. Don't remember them like they were. Go and minister them to them where they are. Amen. Boy, that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, that's saving. <laughs> um, last being recorded. <laughs> you know, don't don't remember don't remember them like they were. Minister to them where they are. Yeah. You know, isn't it nice sometimes when someone will come along beside you and just kind of lift you up, give you that extra little bit of strength that you need? Oh man, we 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 are commanded to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. I remember the great comedian Jerry Clower. You know, Brother Jerry was a great Christian. He was also a deacon in his church. He, he said he told one time, he told some of his deacons, we need to go visit so and so. And some of them were like, well, we want to know what he did before we go visit him. He said, well, let's just gather some stones up and go stone them then. <laughs> really? I mean, don't no, we, no, we have that attitude sometimes? They deserve what they're getting. Let's just stone them. You know what? We all deserve suffering. Mm -hmm. We all deserve pain. We all deserve hell because we're sinners. But you know what? Christ died to save us. He died to save those people too. That's we right. need to bear That's one right. another's burdens. That's <coughs> the challenge that we have. Bearing one another's burdens. See, as mere mortals, we can't comprehend the reason of God. What was the verse I said earlier? My ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, God's ways are so much higher than us, we can't even comprehend it. You know, think about it for a moment. We have technology today that absolutely someone from 100 years ago would just be mesmerized by. You know, sometimes, I used to love to go, Tracy and I would go to the uh, Saturday mornings, the Golden Corral in Titusville for the breakfast buffet. You know, we'd sit there, and it was really cool because I got, I got to thinking one day. We are eating a feast. We have a feast in front of us. Throughout the course of human history, kings didn't eat as good as we were eating. Try. You know, we just take it for granted. We, and that is us today in the modern age, computers and GPS technology and all the other stuff that we got going on right now. It's funny, the camera in the back. We are talking, I found out it's 10 years old. Man, that thing is a dinosaur. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's a Model A. You know, it, it's absolutely archaic. Ten, there was a time, I mean, that thing is amazing. Someone from 100 years ago would marvel at that camera. You know, we look at it and say, wow, that thing's really old. How many of you remember when computers with 64K of storage was the <laughs> big deal? That was a bunch of storage. Today, you mock it. I mean, that, that won't store anything. We should have as mere mortals. And think about all this, and yet God, his ways are so much higher than ours. Yeah. We can't even begin to comprehend it. Because mm -hmm. we see our, see our past. It's always seen as the past and the present, isn't it? 
Now you can sit back. How many of you would like can go look at your mind and say, boy, I wish I hadn't done that? We're all honest. We're all going, yeah, I have. Boy, I can think of some things I did that were really stupid. You know, I wish I hadn't made that decision or done this or that. But you know what? You can't do anything about it, can you? And we can see the present. We know what's going on around us. But you know what we can't see? We can't see the future. You know, I'm, I'm a weather nerd. Um, and I always look at hurricanes and their tracks. And you'll notice that the first 24 hours is pretty narrow. 48 it starts widening out. You get about three or four or five days out, man, that cone's all, I mean, way on out there because it's uncertain. Things can change over the course of time. We don't know what the future holds for us. Amen. We have no idea. But you know what? Guess what? G hey, Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, God sees all the past. He sees all the present and all the future. And I'm going to go one step further. He even knows what could have been had he chosen to allow another direction to take place. Amen. Wow. You know, he, 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 one time, he, he, he was berating some of the people that, in the cities of Corazon and, and those places that were around, around the Sea of Galilee. He told them, he said, if the miracles that had been performed here today had been performed in Sodom, they would have repented in sackcloth and they would have remained on this day. He knew what could have happened. He knew what could have been. He doesn't just know the past, present, and future. He knows what it could have been had a different direction taken place. Amen. Who has known the mind of God that he may instruct him? Wow. You know, I remember years ago, I had a, boy, I had a cracker jack parliamentary procedure team, one of the best I ever coached. And, and, of course, you always have a couple of people on the team that are just super sharp. They're just so good. And, and, and we had, you know, you get your new people. And we were talking about something, and, I, and, and somebody said something, and this new person said, yeah, but instead it should be this. And, and I remember the look of a couple of veterans and myself kind of looking at them going, you're not, you're not there yet. <laughs> you're not there yet. You, have, you haven't studied this enough. You haven't done this enough. You don't have the experience to make that statement. Wait a couple of years, and you'll be the guy sitting over there on the other side as veterans making that statement. You know what? Because you don't understand it. We don't understand the ways of God. Amen. We don't understand his mind. We don't understand his plans. We have insight into it, but we, we can't get beyond our ability to get it. So as a result, what does this bring us to? You see, this, this brings us to the fact that why are, do bad things happen? Bad things happen because of sin. Sin, is, it, it affects our, the creation, and it affects us. Bad things are just the natural consequences of it. Bad things are going to happen. But you know what, folks? There is hope. There is hope. And that hope is through Jesus Christ. This is not the end. We are passing through this life. There's an old song, you know, that, that goes, you know, this world's not my home. I'm just passing through. And that's what we're doing. We're just passing through this life. And the hope that we have is in Jesus Christ. Because he came that we might be set free from this bondage of sin. And that we might have eternal life. And that we might have an abundant life right now. But what does that require of you? That requires, first of all, that you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. That you say, yes, Jesus, I want you to be my Savior. And now I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want, what does it mean to be the Lord? I want you to be the one in charge. I want you to be the one that runs it. I want you to do things the way you say that it should be done, not the way I think it should be done. Yes, that's first. And then, but then, like I said, you've got to have, make it more in your life. And then, and then the relationship comes in. Boy, I've preached this a bunch of times. The relationship. It's not just a one-day, one-time decision. It's an everyday, all-the-time decision. Mm -hmm. Recognize that. Recognize that. Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Do you have a relationship with him every day or only on Sunday? Jesus wants it every day. And if your life's going to be successful, that's the way you've got to have it. So why do bad things happen to people? Because of sin. But what's the solution for sin? The solution is Jesus Christ. I'm going to stand here in a moment. And I'm going to, and I'm going to invite his Perry and it comes forward, I'm going to invite you to take a look in your life, to examine your heart, not to watch them. Take the time, take, you know what they look like. Take, take the time, take the time to examine your heart and say, hey, 
Do I have a relationship? If not, accept him now. If you do have a relationship, you have had he's the Lord of your life, maybe you need to confess some sin. Maybe you need to ask him to, ask him to draw closer to you. Whatever the case is, let, let the Lord speak to you at this time. Let him lead you and guide you. Let's all stand. to share and read Jesus to minister to others. After all, it's not about us, it's about Jesus. Brother Jerry, would you uh, dismiss us, please? No problem.